Hello world, it's Siraj, and who's ready to watch me build an AI startup? In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an AI startup from start to finish. What I mean is we're going to build a simple prototype and I have it right here for you. It's called Smart Med Scan. Let me show you a quick demo. It's running locally on my machine as you see behind me. I've called it Smart Med Scan. Clearly I need to design it a little better, but uh, it's a prototype. And what I'm gonna show you is how this works first and then the entire pipeline of how we would ideate, how we would design a business plan, how we would get our first clients, and then how we would grow our startup, okay, over time. So it, hopefully this whole video shows, gives you an overview of how I would do this. I'm gonna show you, give you all of my secrets of how I would do this. I'm gonna be totally transparent and open with you, all right? So check this out. So the first step for a user is to sign up for Smart Med Scan. And who is this for? This is a tool for doctors to be able to classify image, medical images. So you know, x-ray scans for their lungs. Doctors have all sorts of images that they spend many years learning how to classify with their brain, but um, there's, a, there's a shortage of doctors out there. Um, it's expensive and a lot of times there's a lot of mis misdiagnoses out there, right? So, which is bad for patients in terms of their health and it's bad for doctors in terms of liabilities. So we, we wanna avoid that and the way to do that is to use these deep learning and machine learning technologies to do that for us and to help doctors, to make their jobs easier and to make patients' lives better. Okay, so my email, let's see, I've got all my basic details here, password, um, another password, and I'll submit. Okay, so now that I've signed in, I'm going to pay with card. Okay, so I'm a doctor, I have an image, and I want, it, I want to classify it, so I'm gonna pay with my card. I'm gonna say, you know, this is my email, here's my test card number, whatever it is, it's fake, and then here's my CC, CVC, I'm gonna pay 10 bucks for a single classification. I'll go ahead and pay, the charge goes through, and it says, great job, thanks for paying 10 bucks. Go ahead and upload your file, this now shows up. And I'm gonna say, uh, let's see, I'll say this one, here's my medical image, submit it. It's running inference right now in the cloud, or on my machine, it's running inference. This is machine learning happening right now. It's classifying it. Okay, so now I've uploaded it, it's classified it, and we can see the classification results right underneath, right here. It is very likely that this is an example of pneumonia. This is something that people go to school for years to do, and we just figured out how to automate that, which is amazing. It's gonna help doctors and help patients. It's gonna make life better. And so here's an example, right? And I have different options, different pricings, 1,000 USD, you know, even more for enterprise, hospitals, bigger, bigger medical institutions. So you can see how this could work. So I'm gonna show you how I did this, how I built this, and how I would plan to grow this, okay? So it's a 10 step process. I'm gonna list some of my problems. I'm gonna pick one that I feel most passionate about. I'm gonna do some market research for competing products. I'm gonna buy a domain, create a landing page, get some customers, uh, create a business plan, design the actual pipeline for the real app when I build it, build the app, and then deploy it. And you'll see all of those steps, all right? So, so the first step is gonna to be to find a problem that I actually care about. And, uh, what we can do is we can frame it like this. There are problems that you care about, there are passions you have, and there are strengths that you have, right? So one example would be me, right? So my passion would be to educate people. It's also, it happens to be my strength. And there happens to be a problem where not enough people understand how this AI technology works. So the star then would be to educate people about AI. So that is that would be my real life startup, which it is. And I do make money from that, so this is a startup. It's, it's more, it's, it's, it's grown past startup stage at this point. It's like midsize. Anyway, so, so that's a very kind of basic way to think about, you know, write down what your strengths are, write down what your passions are, write down what the problems you care about are, and then look for the intersection of those three. And in fact, the Japanese have codified this more than 100 years ago with the concept of ikigai. It literally means a reason for being. And this, this chart here shows you what all of that entails, what you love, what you're good at, what you can be paid for, and what the world needs. And that the intersection of all of those four things is your ikigai, and you wanna find that, right? 
So one way to do that is to write down what I, what I said, but also look at the industries that are available, right? So artificial intelligence is going to transform every industry, right? It's not just hype, it's reality. And this is gonna to continue to happen. AI is a new electricity, as Professor Eng says. And so what you can do is you can look at these industries and you can pick and choose one that you would want. So for me, I'm gonna pick and choose three. My three passions are healthcare, education, and scientific research. So a good thought exercise would be to say, you know, hey, this problem sucks. How many people have had have this problem? How many other ways are there to solve it? What, what would it cost to offer a solution? And how does the cost compare to the pain of the problem? And so for me, I'm gonna pick one problem in particular of my three passions, healthcare, right? And so it's gonna be in healthcare. And specifically, I know that image classification technology is really good, then and so then it hap so what happens is we have to pick one of those subfields of healthcare. I'm gonna say radiology, specifically for lungs. That's gonna be the one that I'm, I'm most passionate about because in this example, I have you know, somebody who I know who's been affected by it and here's a story, right? So, so that's, that's how to think about it. But if you cannot think of a problem, no matter you know, what you're doing, do this. Just leave wherever you are for a month and just go to a totally different culture and you gotta increase your training data, right? So find, find new training data, find new cultures, new values, new languages, new people, new perspectives. And, and I promise you, you will find a problem that you are passionate about. You will find your ikigai. You need to get out of your bubble and go forth into strange territory that scares you, right? I lived in Amsterdam for a year. I've lived all over the world at this point, Tokyo. Singapore, everywhere. So, and it definitely helps you find that passion. So definitely do that, okay? That's step one, we did that. Now I have the problem. Healthcare for doctors. We're gonna automate healthcare via a classifier. Now the next step is to do some market research. What are the competing products here? By the way, AI can do literally so much. This is just a subset of what AI can do. It can do anything with natural language processing. It could generate text. It could classify text. It could summarize text. Uh, you can use computer vision to see things and classify things. You can generate new types of images for fashion lines and you can retrieve information in a very intelligent way. You know, there's so much information out there. How do you compress it and how do you present to a customer or a user the most useful information? That is a, an AI problem. How do you filter what they want and what they don't want? How do you predict the future in finance, in asset prediction, in portfolio optimization? How do you make the best decisions when you have a giant company, a giant organization? That's decision analytics. How do you improve the supply chain process? How do you classify these plants that need to be classified if you're if you're a farmer and you're trying to get rid of weeds and increase your supply do you see what i'm saying ai applies to literally every industry the basic human senses of vision of speech of of recognizing text and understanding language machine translation all of this can be automated and we can create services to do this for us so then we can focus on creative pursuits where the more meaningful lives, et cetera. That's a little meta, you see what I'm saying. So if we look at the uh, field of, of AI in healthcare, we know that this is something we can do, right? Input, output, simple input, output, pattern recognition, right? We have the input, it's going to be a medical image, we have our classifier that we're going to build, and it's gonna output what the disease is. Very simple, pattern recognition, supervised learning, find a labeled data set, easy stuff, we can do that. Now, if we look at the competitor landscape for this, and I found this uh, image you know, out there, there's general imaging, and these people try to do everything. You know, they're classifying breast cancer, they're classifying you know, um, all sorts of, the whole body. Then there's like specific niches here. So we're gonna pick this niche, which is lung imaging, right? So if we look at this, these lung imaging startups, I'll go to MBO, I'll check it out, what does it look like, okay. They have a trial situation. Do they have a freemium model? No, they look kind of uh, pulmonary AI. Okay, so they're doing that, fully automated. I don't know, I think it could be done better. They, their site's kind of you know, old school and we could just make it hipper. And look, there's so many different uh, medical facilities out there and they're probably only targeting the US or the UK or the EU. We've got the world to upgrade, right? So we can target those markets that they're not gonna target. We're gonna target the entire world. We'll figure out the regulations when we get there. That's the startup mentality. That's how Uber did it. That's how we're gonna do it. 
And the lung imaging landscape looks pretty disruptable. It's not specialized enough. They're trying to do everything. We're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna laser focus on one type of medical image, and that, that are the, those are the lungs, right? Lung images. We're gonna focus on those. We're gonna do that really, really well. We're gonna do that better than anybody else because we have the data and the technology to do that freely available. And when we do that and we build a customer base, then we're gonna grow and then we're gonna start applying it to all sorts of medical images and that's, that's how that looks, all right? So we have done our market research and assume that I looked through all of these, all right? So this third step is to buy a domain and you know, go to GoDaddy, whatever you want. I'm not endorsing GoDaddy, just like pick a domain, buy it and uh, that's it, right? So when we go to GoDaddy, we can type in smart med scan and see if there's exist any other Great, it's available. Smart Med Scan is available, good. We'll go ahead and buy it. I'm not gonna do that right now. So we assume we bought it. Now the next step is to create a landing page and to do that we need a logo, right? We need a logo. Now I use this AI tool to generate a logo for me. It's pretty amazing, it's called Brandmark. Okay, and what it does is it uses AI to create a logo for you, it generates it. It's a, it's a generative network that they're using in the back, background here. So I'll say it's called Smart Med Scan. We bought the GoDaddy domain or whatever domain you buy it from. And it's gonna be related to hospitals and they're using NLP here to relate images via some semantic similarity index here. Hospital, deep learning, these are my keywords. And it's going to then, deep learning AI, see already new AI. And I'll say, here's the color scheme that we want and it's gonna generate a logo for us. We don't have to do that ourselves. And we're gonna use this logo and this color scheme to create a landing page, right? So check out all these beautiful logos, Smart, smart Med Scan, right here, Smart Med Scan. So we would just pick one and we would say, okay, so here it is, Smart Med Scan, Deep Learning for Hospitals. Look, it's got the guy with the shirt. Man, I love this, I love this site. Um, Look, it's got the guy looking at it as well. Let's not get too into, let's not get too enamored by this right now. Anyway, this is amazing. And so pay them, definitely pay them and stuff. Like I did guys, like, but also like if you don't have money, you can just kind of like screenshot it as well, you know. So they they must have known that's possible. So whatever, you know, if you support them, pay them. But like if you're gonna do that, just do that as well, whatever it takes, you know. So anyway, so that's to create a logo. And now we're gonna create a, a landing page, okay? so. The whole idea of a landing page is that we want to know if we're going to actually have customers before we build this thing. We don't want to waste our time. I did that before with the robotics startup. I don't want to, we don't want to waste our time again. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a landing page that demos this idea with the logo and it's, it's going to have an email. It's going to have a single uh, field to enter your email if you want to learn more. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a one-liner describe what the product is. We're going to put the price and then we're going to say, here it is. If you're interested, sign up. And what we're going to do is we're going to find a bunch of medical facilities near us. We're going to ping them and say, hey, are you interested? And hopefully we get some people to sign up. And if we do, that is called market validation. That's how we know that people actually want our product. And the easiest way to do this is to use MailChimp, which is a tool that I generally use. And so we can say MailChimp landing page. And what MailChimp allows you to do is it's got this free landing page builder. You can try it out. And I'll say it's called test, select the list, whatever, you know, whatever. And we'll begin that. And I'll, I'll pick one of these. Let's just pick this one. Right, so see, here it is, email address. When they sign up, it goes into your MailChimp account and that's how you collect emails. And so we can, you know, change all of this to like med scan, whatever, you know, we can change the text, you know, add all this stuff and we'll just, that, this is easy stuff, but you get the point. And once we have it, we'll do save and close. <clears throat> save and close. And then we'll say um, add a URL and it's gonna generate a URL for us. Save. And then we'll say add page title, unentitled, whatever, publish. And now here is our landing page right here. Right, so here's our landing page. Obviously we need to change it, but you get the point. You can quickly make a landing page and then we'll link our GoDaddy domain to this, right? So in the back end, we just change the name servers uh, to, to this one. Or you, know, or you saw that option that it had to use your own, which you could do. But anyway, that's the point. And so then what we would do is, right, so we create our landing, we create our landing page and now step five is to share that landing page. So let's share that landing page so we can, you know, share it on our social networks, you know, on Facebook, whatever it is, like, hey, sign up for this, hey, 
sign up, you know, make it a better pitch, but like, hey, I, you know, if you're interested, I have a startup for doctors, sign up here, sign up here, coming soon, right? Whatever it is, and then, you know, add the link. And then the other thing we can do is we can go to Maps, and then we can say inside of Google Maps, what are the places that are near me and we can search and then we can find what those places are and we'll just we'll email them or we'll you know call them wherever we'll send them this link with a nice pitch right so that's the fifth step and once we have a list the next step for us is to create a business plan now there are so there's so much advice that exists out there on how to create a business plan write a one page summary define your target market um, and w- the reason we want to do this is just to kind of pan out what the idea would look like in our heads for ourselves. It's for ourselves more than anyone else. So my idea is to get, you know, 25 signups for the landing page, create the app, and then give those signups the app, convert some of those signups to actual paid clients, collect some feedback, like did these doctors like it? What didn't they like about it? You know, they're like, oh, fix this, add this. I'll do that. I'll improve the app with the data, data data-driven. Then I'll collect 100 more paid clients, which I arbitrarily picked as a number. I'll repeat steps four through six, right? Collecting feedback and growing the app until I can't do it anymore myself and I have to hire people. Then I'll make two of the most necessary hires, a full stack engineer who can do both ML, AI, web, and mobile eventually development, and a salesman to go out or woman to find people and to get them to you know sign up for our service. And then eventually, um, I, might, I may or may not raise a first round and um, then hire a larger team. The step 12 and 13 are just a joke. And then the exit strategy will be to be bought out by one of these big tech companies or buy them out. We'll see, you know, it depends on how ambitious we wanna be. And this is called The Lean Startup Mentality. I highly recommend checking out this book. Uh, it's, a, it's a great book, it's by Eric Ries, and it, it talks about how to do this. Basically, you know, TLDR of the entire book is uh, don't just try to raise money, just build as much as you can without making, you know, while being frugal, while being frugal. And, and that is how you build a real business. Okay. So now on to step seven, step seven is going to be to design a pipeline. So what we know we need is first of all, we need there to be a database of users. So authentication functionality, right? That's very basic. Just sign up, log in, right? That we know we need that. And we also need a database to store those users. So we're going to use SQL. SQL is the go-to default database that, you know, we use these days. And obviously there are others, but for, you know, we're trying to build a prototype as fast as possible. Rapid experimentation. It's one of our values at School of AI. Just rapidly experiment until we get to whatever solution we need. Try, fail, try, fail, try, fail. So, um, right, so we want to use a SQL database for our user authentication for our database uh, to store those users. And then we can need a way for them to be able to pay us and the way to pay people. And I'm biased because I use it myself and I have used it is Stripe. I love Stripe. I love you guys. I love the design of everything and um, Stripe rules. So Stripe is the way to collect payments, right? So so once a user signs up, they'll need to be able to pay. We'll need to be able to collect their card information easily, store it in a secured way, and then Once they do that, we want to allow them to upload their images. So Flask will natively allow us to do that. Speaking of Flask, Flask is a web development framework for Python. And the reason that I chose Flask is because I'm most familiar with it. However, Django works just as well, Pyramid, AirPair, and there are a million other ones. But Flask seems to have a lot of good documentation, a lot of good repositories on GitHub, which makes me more inclined to use it. And lastly, once they've uploaded their file, they've logged in, they paid, what is the last thing we want them to do? We want them to, uh, you, to perform inference using our AI model, which will then classify, which will diagnose uh, the medical image. And we'll use Keras for that, okay? So how, let's see, the naive way to do this would be to just build it from scratch. But we are not naive, are we? We recognize how beautiful GitHub is. Now, I'm gonna take a second here to educate you on how powerful the GitHub search is, right? So we have to be really good with searching GitHub, the repository for code on the internet. We know we want, uh, we know we want a Flask app, so we know that. We also know that we want it to have payments and probably Stripe integrated. So let's just search Flask Stripe on all of GitHub. And we've got some great 
Look at this. We've got some great repositories that already exist. And guess what these people did? Uh, they integrated payments, user authentication, and a database for us. This is kind of boilerplate. It has nothing to do with AI. It's just a web app. And this, they, they did it for us. So what we can do is we can build off of their app. And so, you know, I tried several of these and one that I found worked pretty well was called Flask SaaS, which uh, this guy built here. And we can build off of his work. So we're gonna go ahead and clone, download this straight from GitHub. Okay, and uh, we'll get into that in a second. Okay, so, and then we wanna add upload functionality, right? Who, who does, who has upload functionality? Flask image uploader. Oh, he's got a running demo right there. And he's got the code right here. Oh, that's simple. See, we, you have to be able to use GitHub for, the, for what it is. It is an incredibly, in, incredibly useful tool to allow you to rapidly prototype by putting together components that already exist to create something entirely new. That's the whole point, right? So really, you gotta be, you gotta be very smart about using GitHub and looking at those keywords and searching it because it is the Google for code, right? So it's like whatever you want, you know, medical, Flask medical. I don't know if something's gonna show up, probably. A Flask Python web app running on Apache. How much could we learn from that, right? There's so much, it's so rich with ideas, right? So definitely look, at, look into searching GitHub and, and learning how to, you know, have a laser focus on what is useful out of GitHub. Okay, and so the idea is like, okay, so once they've authenticated, we got their payment functionality, what we can do is we can build off of this Flask SaaS app, add that upload functionality, add our Keras you know, snippet of code, and then have a callback where if upload, you know, if the user has signed in and they've already paid, then run inference, if and only if, then run inference, and then display the result as HTML. You see what I'm saying? So that's the pipeline that we want for the prototype. Now we're going to perform transfer learning. So the whole idea behind transfer learning is to not have us have to waste a lot of our time training our model on uh, an extremely large data set. It's, not gonna, it's also not gonna require a lot of computational power. So the, the way to do that is to first decide what technique we're going to use for medical imaging classification. And we know that convolutional networks, a type of ML model, tend to do really well. Now, I'm not gonna explain how they work. I have a great video on that um, called Convolutional Neural Network. Just search YouTube Siraj. It'll be the first link. Watch that, come back if you don't know how they work to this video. Pause, open new tab, watch, come back, right? So. Dependencies, life full of dependencies. Back to this. Convolutional networks, they do really well at image classification. Hot dog, not hot dog. Cancer, not cancer, right? Diabetes, not diabetes. And so it's a very simple process. We train the model with labeled data, then we apply it to unlabeled data and it will make a prediction. That's it, right? So now we're going to write our web app web app, and then we're going to deploy. Step nine, write our web app, and then deploy. So before we do that, check this out. So what I did was I took some time to write out this transfer learning code. And what this code does is it will use Keras, the deep learning library, to build off an existing model. So let me go back for a second and show you something that I forgot to show you. And so there exist a lot of different types of pre-trained classification models that Google and other institutions have built. And what we can do is we can leverage those pre-trained models. And I'm doing this because it represents all the layers of what it's learned before, right? So Inception, for example, it's like 50 layers of everything it's learned from dogs to planes to everything. And what we do is we cut off the final layer. By cut off, I mean we remove that final matrix, um, that the, the final set of matrices that store all of its learnings. We remove it. And then we take the rest of this, so we, we take the head off the Hydra, and then we, we retrain this existing model on our medical imaging data set. And the reason we do that, rather than do it from scratch, is because it improves accuracy. If we leverage all the general features that it's learned from things as random as umbrellas and trains and cars, all of that will improve the accuracy of our specific niche, which, which is, surprisingly, it, it, it does, which is medical imaging. And so that's the idea behind transfer learning. Train a model on a giant data set, and then it, it will just exist as a component, as a building block to further AI models that we build that are more specialized. The technical term are downstream tasks. 
So we're gonna pick one of these models and we're gonna do it. And so what I did was I built the code to, to, to show you what this looks like. We'll first import our dependencies, right? This is running TensorFlow and Keras. And then this is the line that's very important, ImageNet. Here's the weights. It's going to load an existing convolutional network that was trained by Google in a single line of code, okay? And then we'll add some more layers uh, to improve accuracy. Then what we do is we say, okay, here's our model. Um, here, here are the inputs, here are the predictions. Now here's a line where I'm talking about the cutting off part, right? So if it's lower than 20 layers, it's not trainable. If it's greater than 20 layers, it's trainable. So we're only making the last parts retrainable. Then what we do is we import our data from Kaggle, right? So I have many videos on how this works. Search Kaggle Siraj. And so we'll, we'll authenticate with Kaggle. We'll pull that data set from Kaggle and to, let me show you what this looks like, our data set. Here's our data set of Kaggle images, 5,863 images, you know, pneumonia, viral pneumonia, all of those diseases. We can pull it directly from Kaggle, okay? So that's our data set. It's got those, th these are the three labels and then the images are the other columns, right? So it's a labeled data set. And we can pull this directly from Kaggle and then once we've downloaded it into our CoLab research environment, we can take that data, we can say, here's the data, train it on that data, compile it, it's gonna train, and then we download the weights. And to do that, we, what we do is we put it in our Google Drive and then we download it to our local machine and then we, apply, and then we point to it, the .h5 file, or all of the learnings that it's learned on the web, it will then connect to that and I'll show you how to do that locally. So that's transfer learning. Now we're on to step nine, where we're almost done, we gotta write our web app. So let's write our web app, starting with that boilerplate that we just downloaded right here, it's called Flask SAS Master. Okay, so it's called Flask SAS Master 1. That's it. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go here. I'm going to then, let's see, let's make this bigger. Let's do this. I love terminal. Here we go. CD into it. Boom. We're there. Okay. Sublime, open it up. Here's our file. Now, where were we? What was the name of that file? It's called Flask SAS. Now, what are the instructions to run it? Set up, make install and make dev. Great. We can do that. Okay, great. That worked. Create the database. Python 3. Great. SQL database has been created. And now we run the application. That's right, Python 3. Here we go. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, so we just built it. There it is. It's there. We did it. Good, good job. High five. Okay, so it's, a, it's, a, it's bare bones. It's, it's got nothing, but it's got a nav bar. It's got sign up functionality there, and now we can just modify it. Look how easy that was. Right, so I'm gonna sign up and say whatever, 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 and then whatever at whatever.com, and then whatever, whatever, okay? Great, check your email to confirm, great. So it's got that, right? So we did that. Now we've, we've immediately, we have our authentication, our database running. This would have taken us forever and we have done it so fast, awesome. So let's, let's keep going here. Let's look at what this app has in here. How, how is this app structured? We need to understand it. So let's look at in the conf, config file. So in the config file, um, this person added the credentials for the database, it's a SQLite database. Um, they've got the mail server, great, stuff like that. What we wanna do is we wanna add an upload folder, right? So these are just, these, these are global keywords. So one thing we wanna do is we wanna add an upload folder that's going to store whatever images that doctors or whoever uploads. And since it's on my local machine to start, I'm just going to name it whatever my local directory is called. Okay, that's it. That's my upload folder and that's all, right? So anyway, let's see what else I've got here. So let's look in the index file, the index file. Okay, so if we go to index, here's the index, right, that, that home page. 
If the current user is authenticated, then show hi username. Okay, makes sense. And it says it's extending from layout.html. Okay, so what's in layout? That's where the good stuff is. Okay, the, now we've got some style sheets. Now we got to brush up on our uh, HTML and uh, JavaScript. Okay, so what we can do is we can add our logo here, right? So remember that Brandmark logo, assume that you screenshotted it, then you uploaded it to Imgur, right? Then what you can do is you can say, let me add that right, let's say here. And then let's see what it looks like. Boom, there's our logo. There's our logo. And so what we can do now is we can change the rest of the, um, we can change the rest of the attributes in CSS to make it look more like what we would want it to look like. So we'll say for this entire container, we want the background. Uh, so we're gonna say it's gonna be a background color just like that, which is the color that Brandmark gave us. And then we go back here. The whole thing is that color. The whole thing became that color. Good, it's beautiful. Now we gotta center it. I mean, you know what it is. We gotta center this thing now. Center, center, center. Closing, good, good. Good, 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 good. All right, so we did that. Now what are we gonna do? So now we wanna add our pricing. So what we can do is we can go to Stripe and first you gotta create an account at Stripe, right? So I have an account. And once we're in our Stripe account, we can go to the developers tab. We can find our API keys. And so we have two API keys. We have a publishable and a secret key. Obviously I'm gonna change this by the time the video is there. So it's all good. So Stripe has several very easy code snippets that we can just paste in that will immediately take someone's card details and then allow us to authenticate their, their details, make a charge, and it's gonna show up in our Stripe balance. So we don't have to worry about that. Obviously they take a cut, that's their business model, but it's a, it's, it's, it's working well. So what we can do is we can place that here. Let me see if that worked. Let's see what happened. Right, so here's an example. So what I did was I created an HTML table and in that I embedded, let, let's look back at the code. I embedded just these three little Stripe scripts that I just copied and pasted from the Stripe documents, which basically says, here's your data key, choose an amount you want them to pay, and then just paste this in, and they're gonna take care of it using this, see how it's pulling from their JavaScript file to allow for this. So just these, these three pay with card buttons. And so that's it, so we didn't have to code any of that. We'll just type in an email. You know, you can use a, a test card that doesn't you know, work and CVV, and then you can click pay, and then that's gonna make a charge for you. So that's our payment functionality integrated into our app now, okay? So we have our payment functionality, and now what we wanna add are, um, what's next? So we have our payment functionality, we wanna add the upload functionality, right? So uh, we'll do this with HTML. There we go, there's the upload code. Great, thank you HTML. And we'll place it here. If the user is authenticated, only then, then we'll let them upload. Right, so there's that. Right, so now for the last bit, we wanna make sure that we are able to inference, right? So that's the whole point. Once they've uploaded something, we want them to be able to inference with that code. And so the way we can do that is we're going to go into the routing file. And so, okay, so we're gonna add a new route. It's going to be called app.route. Once somebody has uploaded an image via, you know, it could be either get or post, it's gonna be post. These are our different curl commands to talk a little bit of crud, create, read, update, delete, to go back to like old school web development. Now we'll upload a file, right? So. Once a user has uploaded a file, we wanna do something with that file. And so we're gonna import Keras for this. So we have to import Keras, 
And then we're gonna say, well, if it's gonna be a request, if the request method is post, get that file and get that model, the ResNet model. The weights are there. The weights are from ImageNet, which already exists. This is pre pre-training. Or the or actually our retrained model, which are which is uh, uh, weights.h5, the weights.h5 file that we pre-trained, and then we're going to say okay, so our image is going to be image.load image, and it's going to come directly from the file and. That's our image. Now we're gonna use our model to make a prediction, model.predict with the image, and we will return the uploaded HTML page, and we're gonna return the predictions that it's made, and then via on the uploaded HTML page, we'll take that data and we'll format it so it's in a pretty uh, format for the doctors to be able to see. Predictions decoded, great. Awesome, so there we go. So we have our inference code and then it's going to render it for the client. Then what we can do is we can say, let's pay by card. You know, So for the, for the basic plan, we're just gonna say that it requires only you know, 10 bucks for a single image. Now they can move on to higher plans, but that's the basic plan. And then once they paid, then they'll choose a file and the file is going to be this file of a medical image. We'll upload it. It's running inference like we coded out. And then once it's done, it will display the result beautifully for us. Boom, 98% pneumonia, okay? So once we've done that, we can move on to the next step. And the next step is going to be to deploy it. And the way we do that, like the way I would do this is to just go to Heroku. And so here's like a bunch of deployments that I added, but it's really simple. We just say, okay, in the directory, we say Heroku, which is a keyword command, say Heroku. And so which is the one we want right here. So right here we say Heroku create, we'll create a remote Heroku create a remote branch. Great, we're in. We created it, it's called Stormy Ridge. Here's the link and now we say git init, git add dot, git status, that's everything. Git commit m, let me make this bigger. Git commit m, yo, git push Heroku, git push Heroku master. All right, so that's it for Heroku deployment. And obviously now it's, a, it's an actual link. We can link that to our domain. We could switch it up with our landing page and there's a lot more we can do, right? So that was this 10th step. Now in the future, what can we do? Well, we can obviously add a mobile app so doctors can classify with their uh, mobile devices, with their, with their cameras. And we can have it happen on the device with like low, low power inferencing techniques, CoreML for iOS and Android has its whole, whole suite, to, has a whole suite dedicated to this. And then we can also make a better model, right? So one thing we can do is we can add batch inference. So they can upload many, many images all at once, not just one. Uh, we can design it better. Obviously the design could have been much better. And also we can create a continuous serving pipeline. And the best tool I've seen to do this is TensorFlow serving. I mean, this is really, really powerful stuff. The whole idea behind serving which is the TensorFlow library, is that it builds this continuous pipeline of models that are training on new data, retraining, and it's got this uh, version control uh, system where older models will be deprecated and newer models will come in in real time. So it's this continuous training pipeline where it's improving over time. It's learning from its user's data, from your user's data. And this is very, very po powerful. And it's, it's, it's what we want to do. We want to make our system better with every image that it sees. We want it to continuously improve and we want it to be robust and to always stay online. So obviously I did not cover every single thing needed to build an AI startup, but hopefully I gave you some education, some inspiration, um, and to just 
an example to show you that this is indeed possible and it is something that you can do no matter who you are, where you are, this is something that you can do, all right? So, and you'll find the code for this in the video description. Hey, I hope you liked this video. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments section. Hit the like button if you liked it and please subscribe for more programming videos. For now, I've gotta take a break. So, thanks for watching.